Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to start off with a review of everything we've done for the past two lessons. We are going to then talk about three new things, apparent power, power factor, and leading and lagging power, which is part of what power factor is. This is our, everything comes out of this reading from the book. Next class, take a quick scan over 11.6, you'll be prepared. And the problem set is problem set 34. It's not collected, but you guys know by now, if you don't do it, you will be hurting for the test. And if you do it, you'll be doing great for the test. Liam had a good question about notation. So let's talk about the notation. If we're talking about a, a, a typical sinusoid like this, then Ben, what is the maximum going to be of this sinusoid? Would it be 10? It's just 10. And what's its phase? Theta sub V. Three? That, or the 40. Come on. That's 40, right. Three is its frequency in radians per second. Grant, what is its phasor V for this guy? Uh, 10 angle 40. That's it. And I'm drawing it as a phasor. I'm drawing it bolded so you know that we're talking about a complex number here. What's its complex conjugate? It's just 10 angle negative 40. That's all it is. And if it's in rectangular notation, the imaginary part would be negated. Uh, Cole, what is its voltage in RMS units? Is that where you can take like the voltage and divide it by the square root of two or that, no? That's it exactly. Oh, perfect. And that's the equivalent of the DC voltage that will dissipate the same amount of power in a resistive element as this whole thing. And then Cole, just to finish it up. Oh, what are the units of this? Do you remember? It's not volts, but it's volts Don't RMS. Yeah, it's volts yeah. RMS. Just to remind you that we're working in, in RMS. And then similarly, the phaser is going to be the exact same thing. 10 square root of two angle of 40. And again, we're talking about in volts RMS, not bolded because this isn't a phaser. This is a phaser. What I want you to get used to is working in RMS units, because I'm telling you all the math will be easier in RMS units. When you work in the power industry, when people say volts, they mean volts RMS. If they don't say specifically, everybody uses RMS. It's a change. So now that we've got the notation down, let's talk about what average power is. This is what we talked about last time. The average power, instead of doing this integral, if we've just got a sinusoid, you can calculate as being one half V max, I max, cosine, the difference in angles, or we can stay in the phaser world here in these bolded numbers and say it's equal to one half the real part of V dotted with I complex conjugate. Check out what happens with the complex conjugate. You flip the sign of the phase when you multiply these things in polar notation, you multiply their magnitudes just like we did here, but you take the negative of the phase and you add the two phases. So we get the phase of the V minus the phase of the I. And that's why these two things are exactly the same. Just one is using phasers, one is using real numbers. Now, last class, we talked about redoing this in terms of RMS values. And it's easier in terms of RMS values. It's just V RMS times I RMS times cosine of that difference between those phase angles. We don't need this half anymore because remember to get VR RMS, as Cole said, we just multiply VM by one over square root of two. So if we multiply one over square root of two by one over square root of two, we get one half. That's the connection. But we like to work in VRMS units because now it's just at power is just voltage times current, just like it was with this correction factor if we're not going through a resistor. What's the correction factor if we go through a resistor? What's the difference between theta V and theta I? Josh, if you've got a voltage that looks like in phasers, 16 in an angle of 12, and it's going through a resistor, I'll say it's a two ohm resistor. What's the current phaser gonna be? It would be eight. He said it would be eight. Eight what? Amps, he says. Not quite. It's got a phase. It's got a phase angle to it. If you're putting in something at a it phase does. angle of 12 degrees, then you'd better have something out with the phase angle, right? Let's, let's go back to how we figure out what current is in general. Current is equal to voltage mm -hmm. over impedance. So our voltage here is 16 at an angle of 12. Our impedance is just two. So what's the current? Eight. Um, eight at an angle of 12. So now this is our angle of our voltage. This is our angle of our current. What's the difference in the angle between them? Zero. 
zero. And we'll always have a zero difference in this angle between voltage and current for any resistor, just like we know it's gonna be 90 degrees, either plus or minus 90 for a capacitor or an inductor. All right, so armed with that, we can rewrite this in phasors and say it's equal to the real part of the voltage RMS phasor times the current RMS phasor complex conjugate. So just using the RMS values just takes out the one half from the non-RMS value. And so just recall for these things that V RMS is equal to the V maximum over the square root of two. And that's true for sinusoids and that's true for any component at all. All right, that's what we did last class.